I don't know what it was. He's walking upright like a man. Sightings in and around Vermont. Bigfoot sightings across New England have been reported. Red glowing eyes, about seven feet tall. Red eyes, big old fang claws coming out through. Three inches long, you know, just sharp as they could be. There has been another UFO sighting flying over the Royal Botanic Gardens. There are 500 UFO sightings in the world every month. The truth is out there. <laughs> I still hate the fact that you have that thing. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I love it. Like, I hate it in the sense that I hate it. Yeah. <laughs> right you know what i mean uh-huh. i don't actually hate it i just hate it yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> things oh. that make sense yeah um so yeah I, I didn't i don't know if i told you everything that happened with the car no but... what went on because i i saw okay. a picture on your instagram of the flat and yep. then i got you texted me because my car was also in the shop and yep. I thought, okay, he's getting a tire changed. And then an hour later, he texted me. And I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> That's more than a flat. <laughs> yeah, so here's what happened. Um, I had picked up Panera in Kingston at, like, 8.30. Because I was in Kingston at 8.30 for, yeah. for therapy reasons. Um, and I had stopped by Target to grab, well... What it, it, I ended up grabbing sound wave while I was at Target. <laughs> of course. So I'm driving, and you know how, like, between the Target and the Sam's Club, there's that four-way intersection? Yeah. I drove down that intersection. I hit, like, the smallest pothole in the world, and I got a flat. Oh, I think it I know like, exactly where you're talking about. Yep. Because I, that's the route I take to get to the hardware store, to Lowe's. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, I was not a fan of it, <laughs> to say the least, because what happened was it popped, and then it was like I was driving on snow. Oh, no, that's not great. Yeah, so I drove the car into the Residence Inn parking lot, checked it, oh. confirmed it was a flat. Shit. Um, then I pulled out of the Residence Inn parking lot, and I pulled into the Sam's Club. Yeah. Uh, after that... I left a note in the thing, <laughs> and I guess... Wait a minute, okay. The residence in, if I recall, is on the other side of the road. Yes. <laughs> so you went through the four-way intersection to get to the Sam's Club. <laughs> I took the back way. I took the back way. Okay. Yeah. Which actually worked out well, because they removed the... Uh, the uh, What's the word for it? Um, the flat? No, they removed the bump, the speed bump, on the way to the Sam's Club. Okay. So... We go back in the morning, check it out. Because basically, I just listen, pick me up and brought me home, yada, yada, yada. Um, so we got back, go back in the morning, and I see a split in the, the bead. Uh, huh. And I was just like, oh, this is not going to go well. So I go in, talk to the Sam's Club guy, and they're like, yada, yada, yada. We'd have to order the tires. They were too, like, you wouldn't get them until Tuesday, blah, 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 blah. So I'm like, oh, okay. So then I went to, the, to get a, a donut because... For whatever reason, my car doesn't have a spare tire. Oh, because yeah. I hate that. Um, so we go to the the Hyundai dealer, and the Hyundai dealer's like, "Oh no, you got to go over to the Toyota de- the dealership to do to the service department." <laughs> and I'm like, "Whatever." So we go to the service department. Service department's like, "Oh no, you got to go to parts." And then it's no, like, "Oh, that's the worst." So we end up in parts. And I buy a, a new donut for, like, $250. Yeah. Which is wild to me that a donut costs that much. But that's a whole nother, a whole nother set of things. So get the donut, put it on, drive it down to the Midas. <laughs> You're just going everywhere. <laughs> yeah, it was a fun day. Yeah. The Midas, luckily, because I got my tires through the Midas, I've got a warranty on them. And that warranty included road hazards. Ah, nice. Okay. So I didn't have to pay a cent on the the tires. I just so happened to got get my um my rotors replaced because they needed to get replaced. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Holy cow. So that took me. That lasted until like three o'clock. I want to say. No shit. Okay. That whole thing. 
we got out there at 10, so it was like a five-hour endeavor just to get this, this tire replaced. Yeah. So, Shoot. yeah, I had a lot of fun. <laughs> On the plus good. side now, uh, when I brake with my car, it doesn't sound like it's dying. Fantastic. Which I... was a serious problem. Yeah, at the, the same time you're doing that, my car was in the shop uh, because my airbags, uh, well, they were the Takata airbags, and mm-hmm. for some reason the propellant degrades, and when they deploy, it shoots, uh, they basically break and shoot the metal shrapnel all over the car. <laughs> it's basically, you you have a Claymore as a... Uh, as an airbag. As an air, yeah. airbag, yeah. <laughs> it's like driving yeah. with a Claymore pointed at your face. Yeah. Luckily, uh, that was fully covered uh, by yeah. Toyota because the company that manufactures those is no longer in business, which is good because I understand, like, one bad mistake. But if you go to their Wikipedia page, every year they existed, they had a bad, bad mistake. Uh, <laughs> I I almost wonder how that's physically possible. But then again, I also work in corporate. <laughs> so it's one of those situations where it's like, I don't know how this is possible. But I totally know how this is possible. Yeah. So, yeah. but yeah, no. So it's it's always fun. Uh huh. Um. Luckily, though, Kingston, you know, for a for like a weirdly dead city. Uh huh. Like, cause let's not let's not pretend that Kingston isn't. Oh, it's kinda dead. dead. Yeah. <laughs> for a weirdly dead city, it also has like a surprising number of like just utility stores. Oh yeah, right. Like, like it has a bunch of stuff. Like, Kingston's mu- number one, like job is definitely service. Oh, it's gotta be. It's gotta right? be. Right. Yeah, they've got everywhere, which is great living in it because then if I ever like anything I ever need, it's just down the road. <laughs> yeah. No, it is actually extremely convenient. Yeah. Um. But at the same time, there's like. Like, it's great if you just need something, but if you want to go somewhere, in Kingston, like, making the justification for going to Kingston just to go to Kingston is very difficult, especially when I live close to Poughkeepsie. Yeah, well, like, but we're getting a movie theater soon. A nice one. <laughs> I'm actually nice excited one. for that. I'm excited for that. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I'm probably going to go to that movie theater, too, because yeah. it looks like it's nicer than the Regal near us. Oh, man. So... But like outside of like service, they, there's they, they, there's not really a whole lot. <laughs> Thanks, IBM. Yeah, <laughs> which I can say as an IBMer. Yeah, it's just we've got uh, the dead tech city. Yeah. Oh my god, that place is so wild. Yeah. So, uh, because we're talking about regional stuff, uh, imagine an abandoned building that was designed to house like a couple thousand workers. Yeah. And it sits empty 24-7. Yeah, for years. For years. Like, as long as I've been able to remember, that building has been empty. Yeah. I it's, never it, remember it being having any use, but it's always been, yeah. like, tech city. <laughs> well, the funny thing is, yeah. the I know this because my dad used to be a cop mm-hmm. in Kingston. Um, they use those buildings for paintball practice. Oh, that's so fun. they can test, so they can learn tactics. Yeah, for like you know, like SWAT teams and stuff like that. Uh huh. Which I don't feel like there's a huge need for SWAT teams in Kingston, but then again, I could be wrong. Well, so I'm by the armory, so that's where when um when the when they deploy the National Guard and all that, that's where they uh, all start okay. out beforehand. All right. Um, yeah. Before they deploy, so they all um. Like, I'll be, because I take the back roads once I'm in Kingston on my way home from work because I'm not driving through a city on rush hour. And uh, every once in a while, not wrong. like, you'll know when there's a uh, a drug bust or something going on because I'll drive past the armory. <laughs> and there's just, like, yeah. armored vehicles and shit. I'm like, oh, someone's got them drugs. Because <laughs> oh, that's the, they, all, they call the National Guard for that stuff. And <laughs> Really? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, hmm. so when they had the big one in Poughkeepsie, or uh, the, when the guy was selling, like, used audio equipment, but it really, they were just 
filled with cocaine. They That's uh, amazing. They uh they, they all were at the uh the armory uh beforehand. <laughs> so, That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So uh I think I think I'm going to 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 start the show then. Yeah. Right? Uh, the whole monsters thing, right? Yeah, so monsters the, and stuff. Yeah. We're, we're Cryptopedia. We do monsters and stuff. Yeah. Uh, although we did also do the urban legends, so that's a thing we do too. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm John. I'm Brandon. And Brandon's description of what our show is is much better than mine. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, this week's Cryptid. Um, interesting story behind it. I okay. have already talked about this cryptid on the podcast, and while I was researching it, I'm like, "Wow, this sounds really similar." No, to something else we've covered. Shoot. So I go back, I look into it, I read it all. I'm like, "Wow, all these names were the exact same names." Huh. Oh, this is the exact same cryptid, but I didn't go super deep into it. <laughs> so, the first sighting of this cryptid was in 1973. And the last canonical sighting was in 1976. For taxonomy, uh, I'd call it a Shrekfoot. Shrekfoot, okay. And its region is Illinois. I can't give you any more details because that will give it away. This isn't like Enfield Horror but more, is it? It was in the Enfield Horror episode that I Oh. I mentioned this monster in the Enfield Horror Monster episode in passing as like a, this is something else that was happening in the same time. Oh, man, I don't, there's no way I'm going to be able to, my recall is that no, good. No, that's fair. Oh, so shit. this, this yeah. week's episode is the Murfreesboro Mud Monster or the Big Muddy Monster, <laughs> the... named for the, the Big Muddy River. The Murphy's um, Mud Monster from the Muddy River? The Big Muddy. It's gotcha. a river in, in Illinois. Okay. You cannot see it from a like a large map, but it's a pretty uh let's see, where does it go through? Is there anywhere interesting that it goes through? Uh-huh. Hmm. Let's see. I I I I don't see any really interesting places that the Big Muddy goes through, so Sorry, Big Money. Uh, it does connect to the uh, the Mississippi, so there's that. But then again, most rivers in that area do. So, um, before you, the... you start, I yeah. opened the copy. Yeah. Is this like an eyewitness sketch yes. of the creature? Yes, it is. Oh boy. Okay. Oh boy, indeed. So what I'm looking at is something. It's if if anyone's aware of star trek imagine a trivel but it has a neck i don't know what i'm it's the worst description imagine if the lady that tried to like restore the painting of jesus in a church was a police (laughs) sketch artist (laughs) oh my god that is probably the best description ever for this thing (laughs) this is so bad pencil on paper i don't know what that is yeah. holy cow i mean you're roasting a 17 year old's drawing but... it's got that's listen that's the age where you're you're old enough to be critiqued harshly and it's fair it's clear that this is a cotton ball with two eyes yeah it also looks like it has like a, either a nose or a mouth i don't know it's confusing there's something um, in the middle there but that's as far yeah. as i could get i think i need a forensic analysis of this photo i think we should get one <sighs> so Located in southern Illinois, uh-huh. Murfreesboro, which was about 10,000 people in the 70s, okay. was a sleepy little town of minimal import. And when I say minimal import, I mean I was looking at the list of things and there was nothing that jumped out at me as particularly interesting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, during the summer of 73, this would change a little bit um, with a wave of terror kicked off by a Bigfoot-like monster dubbed the Murfreesboro Monster, or the Big Muddy Monster, yeah. depending on who you're talking to. Um, unlike most cryptids in this podcast, I was actually able to access photocopied police reports. Oh, right on. Um, these these police reports are going to be the skeleton of this 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 podcast episode. Okay. Um, 
I deliberately didn't use sources outside of the police reports. Um, well, I did and I didn't. So I used sources outside the police reports to augment certain parts of the story and add yeah. a little bit more depth. But I avoided using sources outside of the police reports to report on the qualities of the monster. Gotcha. Okay. And my rationale for that is, hypothetically speaking, these police reports should be the most accurate description of it. Yeah. And the most impartial description of it. Mm -hmm. So I'm relying on the police reports as the primary source. I also found a New York Times article written uh, as as a contemporary to this story. Um, which offers a few more details about the, the time. Sweet. So, uh, sources laid bare, as always, you can read them in the show notes. Um, it's also kind of conspicuous that the, uh, the, so the reports are available on the Murfreesboro website. Huh? Like it's a big old PDF. Yeah. I think it's like a hundred pages. I didn't read all of it because most of it's just letters about the Murfreesboro monster. Yeah. Uh, but I, I think the rationale for why they did this uh, was because this was legitimately the most like requested police report from the department. <laughs> so yeah. they probably they probably did it to prevent having to answer the up. same questions yeah. over and over and over and over. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, as I said before, I did cover this on episode two, uh, and that was months ago, and it was way too brief, so there we go. <laughs> Additionally, and I, this is a, uh, at least for like a week after we release this podcast, this is only for patrons. Yeah. Uh, I made a map of the events. Ooh. Uh, oh, I like it. Too. Yeah, color-coded pins. Yep. Um, and with brief descriptions about it and all that stuff. So yeah. if you're a patron, there's a little bit of a value add for you. And if you're not a patron, well, I might make it available eventually, but that's probably fun. not, like not for a while. Um, well, oh. the main reason I did it was cause I was trying to visualize spatially where everything was. Yeah. Um, and sometimes setting up a spatial matrix of, or a spatial, example for what is happening a space makes it a little easier yeah a little bit easier to understand what you're dealing with you can also change the map so it's a um like a satellite yeah which might be a little more useful this is um, fun so for for the, the curious it's a google maps with color-coded uh markers or in different locations and then it looks like a perimeter i'm not gonna read too deep into it because i'd like it to be like I'm sure you'll yeah. get into all this so, stuff, but there's like yeah, a this perimeter is... area set up and, and all that. So it's it's fun. That's cool, man. So this is more or less a uh, a companion to this podcast episode. Yeah. So the first report of the Murfreesboro monster happened on June 25th, 1973. Um, it feels like dates aren't correct unless they're shouted. Yeah, but I don't <laughs> feel like shouting. I also don't okay. want to steal Dave Anthony's bit. Yeah. That's his bit. That is his bit. He worked hard on that. Also, <laughs> saying two things and then having a bunch of uh, bad descriptors based on things that are around you in the room. Yeah. Um. So, the first event of the saga with the Murphy Grove monster, which I'm legitimately calling a saga because it kind of is, uh, is recorded as a police report filed by a Randy Needham, age 19. Um, I've included a link to these police reports uh-huh. because they're, quite frankly, amazing. Uh, it's kind of wild to see a police report written because I've never really... This is the first time I really looked into police reports. Mm-hmm. Um, they're they're obviously typed, but like in this particular case, uh, the incident complaint was sighting of an unknown creature. Um, so basically there was a couple, one Randy Nehem, who was 19 and a Judy Johnson, who was 28, who were hanging out by a boat ramp parking area on the big muddy river around midnight. So if you look at the, uh, if you look at the map, you can see around about where that is. I don't yeah. know if the, I don't know if that's the current, uh, setup. Like if that was the setup when, 
the event happen. Mm -hmm. um, but it does look like it. There is also a chance that Lindell Avenue might have been in a different place, mm -hmm. or Lindell Street might have been a different thing, because the police report did say Lindell Street, uh, but I couldn't find a Lindell Street in the city limits of uh, Murfreesboro. Yeah, but well, I did find a Lindell, Lindell Avenue. Avenue. There's a boat ramp right there. I think you found the spot, yeah. man. I think I did, but I'm not sure. And based on the description I'm about to give you, it matches up. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, according to the report, the area was mostly remote, remote, and it bordered the woods. So it can be assumed that they were doing some sort of Bible study, because what else would a teenager <laughs> and a decade older friend in the 70s be doing uh, out in a remote location? Because I yeah. can't think of anything, right? Yeah, no, there's nothing there's, else they could be doing. There's literally <laughs> nothing else they could be doing. Uh, As a brief aside, I was looking into the, the New York Times article on this. Yeah. And um, they had a little bit of a bit of flavor to this story. Yeah. Uh, the article in question was written on November 1st the same year. Okay. Um, and they reported that Judy was married. Oh, ooh la la. Note that her name is not Judy Needham. <laughs> I think there was some hanky panky going down by the boat ramp. Yeah. So this piece of information is likely why the police investigated the story at all. Um, however, I would caution people against saying that this is a smoking gun. Okay. Because just because someone is having an illicit affair and they make a police report, that doesn't mean that the police report is 100% accurate. It doesn't mean that what happened to them is paranormal. It just means that they were shook enough to make a police report. I think that they did see something, because yes. if you're out doing some sneaky hanky-panky, the last mm -hmm. thing you're going to do is call the police to your location. So I think, yeah. I think they did likely see something that would yes. have caused this. Yeah, I, I think they saw something. I just don't know. It doesn't necessarily indicate that it's paranormal. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't. It doesn't require that it be paranormal. It requires that it it shook them enough to report it. Yeah. Um, I couldn't find much other information about Randy Needham or Judy Johnson other than the weird illicit affair bit. Yeah. So, regardless, um, Randy heard a loud screaming sound in the wooded area and observed a large creature approximately seven feet tall. No shit. So if you have access to the map, you can see that there's like kind of wooded area between the boat ramp and the river. Yeah. He saw um, something right in that area. Supposedly. Oh. So oh. yeah, the creature was bipedal, uh -huh. had light colored hair and approached the car screaming the whole time, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah he was having one you know what it is it's a creature but it it's 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 never seen humans before and the first thing it saw were what these two were doing and it <laughs> <laughs> what what are you doing that's not what that that's for the, stop the creature was just panicking stop <laughs> Why, hey, what are you guys? Are you guys just shaking hands? Oh no! <laughs> oh man, I'm gonna have to automate that. I'm sad waveform. I apologize. Yeah, that was that was a pretty good one. Um, or uh, it's like the uh, Sasquatch from uh, Venture Brothers. Yeah, yeah, remember that? Yeah. The, they they <laughs> shaved him. Yeah. And... <laughs> oh god, man. Venture Brothers was phenomenal. I think it's still technically uh, in production. It's just they Ooh. have like a really insane schedule for releasing. Yeah. Shoot. But, anywho, we're not going to have another hornswoggle this episode. <laughs> I hope. Uh, oh, the vocalizations maybe. of the creature were reported to change tone over the length of the encounter. Meaning, which... So I don't actually know what that means, but I assume that means that they're like, ah, 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 or something like that. <laughs> maybe, who knows, maybe the creature was, was copying what it was hearing. Oh, that'd be super creepy. Like a pervy parrot. 
<laughs> wow, how many parrots? How many parrots do you think copy times that you don't want people here? <laughs> it's your neighbor comes over and just sees the parrot squawk and then just gives away your darkest secrets. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's why you can't trust parrots. You cannot trust a parrot. They have zero chill. No. For real, though. <laughs> they have zero chill. <laughs> squawk, he's into weird shit. <laughs> <laughs> Check under the bed. <laughs> That's where he keeps it. <laughs> where did you hear that? <laughs> I just want people to find out. Squawk, he never washes it. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Oh, Toucan Sam, what a bastard. Oh, boy. Well, Toucan Sam is not a parrot. He's a toucan. No, he's a parrot. He just goes by Toucan Sam. Does he wear like a weird face thing he's in a costume okay it's like it. a, he's a furry for birds a burry well now you've just created a reality in my brain that i had to wrap my head around because <laughs> because assuming that that they animals had weird they had weird stuff that they do uh-huh which i assume some animals do but i feel like humans are very good at weird stuff yeah like, it's one of those things where we're just we're just nasty. There's my cat. My one cat does weird stuff to the other cat, and then I sent I I, I showed a video to the vet. <laughs> she was like, uh, "Your cat might just be nasty." <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so the couple fled the scene to the police department to report the encounter. Uh huh. Because keep in mind, this is before like cell phones and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, it should be noted that Judy was unable to see the creature. Mm -hmm. However, she said the scream was inhuman, as no human would be able to make a scream or make a noise as loud as what they heard. Okay. And very that's a loud quote, direct boy. quote. That's a direct quote from the police report. Yeah. So, um, officers arrived at the area. They spotted it, spotlighted it, and found nothing. Which, uh, given if this is if this is like the uh, if if where I found is correct, mm -hmm. the rough area of this region, mm -hmm. um, it's about I got a measurement real quick. Uh, it's about a hundred feet to the river, and the wooded area that they're dealing with for the the directly south of the area is about an acre. So okay. it's not huge. Yeah. Um. So assuming that there was something there, they would have been able to see it. Um. They uh they would return to the the site with Randy, and they there were impressions found in the mud. They were approximately three to four inches deep. Uh huh. Ten to twelve inches long and three inches wide. <laughs> um. <laughs> Yeah, so this is a really weird foot. That doesn't look like a foot to me. It looks like the monster saw what they're doing and just starts slapping the mud with this donger. <laughs> God. So Brandon's commenting on the photos that are in the, the show notes yeah. and also the police report that is there. Um, the prints were described as erratic. No two were the same distance apart, and some were five to six feet apart. And others were close together. Yeah, it's a very strange yeah, it looks like someone slapped the mud with a carrot. Yeah, it kind of does. Um, while investigating the prints, a loud, shrill s scream was heard, and it was identified by Randy as the monster. Okay. Um, so, basically, what they're saying here is uh, they went, they checked it out, they didn't see anything, they found prints, they took pictures of the prints. Um, I believe that the... It was southeast near the river that they heard the scream. So if you're looking at the, if you're looking at the um, image, mm -hmm. uh, the the map. So from the position that they were looking, it was about where South Twentieth Street meets the Big Muddy River that they heard the scream coming from. Oh, okay. Roughly somewhere around there. Um, yeah. Which 
is another mm, approximately uh, six acres. So it's a little bit bigger in that area. Yeah. Um, but so looking at the prints, I don't know what these people are talking about because they do not look like footprints in yeah, any way. Yeah, I would not be able. I can't, you can't look at them and say that's a print. Is yeah, I, if I looking at the photo, it does not look like a print. And actually, if you look at the um, the show notes, Brandon. Yeah. Uh, there's a link to this. Scroll down in that until page. Uh, you, the, the photos are there too. Yeah. So, um, that they, they're a little, it's a little higher quality than in the show notes. Mm-hmm. Uh, but so there's a few things about that, about this description that kind of bug me. Um, first, the footprints are skinnier than my feet, and I'm yeah. I'm five foot ten, uh, and I'm roughly three by nine inches for my feet, with like three and a half at the the widest point. So. Kind of, kind of strange for a seven foot monster to have small feet, but you know that's not unheard of. So I'm not gonna lambast it. Well, those impressions um, don't look deep enough to be a uh, anything of size. What it, they look more like is if you were carrying like a stick and walking through the mud and just sort of like swinging the stick and whistling, going yeah. <laughs> and then um, like you just take a it, the back of the stick hits the mud. That's sort of what they look like. Well, in the the higher quality photos, it almost looks like a paw print like you can kind of see the drag of like uh like a paw like you know to the toe beans you can kind of see the toe beans dragging through the mud um i i don't really see the footprint personally like it it almost looks like a heel in the second picture but the first picture looks like nothing it looks like uh it looks like someone cut into the mud Mm -hmm. um that being said, I don't think the cops faked it. It's just I don't think it looks like anything. Um, additionally, normal mammals tend to have mostly regular gaits. Yeah. Right? So even if an animal or a person has a limp, the manifestation of the limp will be consistent in my encounters, and it will uh, it'll be repeated at a regular interval, um, especially in bipeds. Like... Let's let's just keep this in mind. They're describing a bipedal creature. Yeah. Bipedal motion is very hard to do without a consistent gait. Mm-hmm. Right? So, like, think about it. Think about why drunk people fall. It's because they don't have a sense of equilibrium. So their motion is, like, staggered. But you'd also expect to see a creature falling in the mud. Yeah. Right? So ultimately, it's a little bit conspicuous because it doesn't line up with my personal understanding of biology um in of the way that animals and creatures move but uh, of course i'm not a zoologist so well, how my long opinion did this is that happen relative to the monty python ministry of silly walk skit that's a good question <laughs> well this is 73 yeah um ministry of silly walks was some sometime in uh Season 70, two, right? 19, September 15th, 1970. So it existed. Okay, so maybe now this the creature had seen that skit. Well, but the question is, did the Ministry of Sk- Silly Walks skit make it to America by 73? It could That's be a worldly creature. Fair enough. Wow, I just <laughs> found... Hmm. All right, someone did this. Uh, there's a bunch of anime characters doing silly walks. <laughs> Fantastic. Like, this is a thing that I didn't know existed. Here's a picture for you, Brandon. <laughs> oh, gee, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, that's a thing. Uh-huh. Also, there's a clock that has the dude's legs, uh... As the, the hands? It? Yeah, is that Jonathan... Cleese, cheese or whatever yeah john cleese uh, yeah yeah it's john cleese okay. like the, i wrestled a bear uh once song reese's pieces i don't know who john cleese is oh yeah god damn it man i love john cleese yeah i think he's my favorite uh monty python person i know i know that's a bold 
That's a bold claim. <laughs> right? <laughs> oh, you like the one that everyone likes? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but anywho. Ultimately, I, I don't know. The, 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 the physical evidence doesn't seem to be really all that interesting to me. Mm-hmm. Or, like, it doesn't seem indicative of anything. Because it doesn't match the pattern of any existing Bigfoot sightings. Yeah. Um, and it looks more like random scrapings in the mud. Mm-hmm. And there's a million and one things that could be. For all we know, kids could have been playing in the mud. Yeah. Right? So, I don't know. And this is June, so it's like early summer, right? Mm-hmm. So, it's entirely possible that kids could have been out for the year. There's a lot of stuff. There's a lot of factors that are at play here that I don't know if I'm willing to say one way or the other what it is. Mm-hmm. I will say I don't know what they saw definitively. Uh, I believe that they saw something. I don't know what they saw. though. And for that matter, they could have heard something as well because animals can be weird with the noises. they make. Oh, yes. Just in general. I've heard some strange vocalizations from my cat. <laughs> Mostly they're threats. Yeah. It's usually a problem. If your cat starts threatening you. Yeah, if your cat looks at you help. and says, don't fall asleep, then you need to be worried. Because it is, mm-hmm. it is, it can be a thing very quickly. Yeah. Oh, no. Definitely. So the next day, uh, another couple cites it. So this is June 26th, 1973. Um, the, the couple's a little younger and a lot less scandalous. Um, a Cheryl Ray, age 17, and Randy Kreef. Yes, that's right. Another Randy, although this one's 17. Uh, were sitting on the back patio talking. Mm-hmm. A large creature emerged from the patch of trees near the edge of the yard, and it was described as being 7 to 8 feet tall, weighing 300 to 350 pounds. Pale, dirty white, or cream-colored, um, and standing at 2 feet. So it's like a, a whitish... It's Ben Kissel. It's Ben Kissel. It's it's Ben Kissel. They didn't describe the red hair, but since it's a, since the time the report was filed at was around ten o'clock, I assume that this was pretty close to when the report was filed. Mm -hmm. So, and I also looked at the the sundown time that day. It was like eight o'clock. Yeah, it was twenty two hundred hours roughly. So that's ten o'clock. So assume that they probably saw it in the dark. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So they probably wouldn't have seen the shock of red hair at the top of the head. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So apparently Randy approached the creature. Okay. And he got within 30 to 40 feet of it and reported a musky odor, which if you're dealing with any creature that has hair covering its body, it's going to be musky. Yeah. Or if you're dealing with a man who has too much musk for, uh, cologne. Yeah. It's going to be musty. <laughs> um, so on the map, this is represented by the like lime green uh, yeah. stuff. So the first event happens at 37 Westfield. Um, it's at the edge. like It's basically on the cul-de-sac that that road in Cat- yeah. has. Um, it was a little weird to piece this one together because the, the description gets a little bit hazy after this point mm-hmm. and my mental map it took me a while to figure out where all these things were happening yeah so the officers arrived on the scene and found some trace of a creature in the area reported they found weeds broken down and somewhat a path of a path that the creature had walked through. oh so okay. they found some some evidence of yeah. the um it should be noted that if you look at the police report for this uh particular incident they have all the officers that took part in it Mm -hmm. and there's at least four officers that were associated there's there's two officers associated with it and then a uh a police security dog type guy gotcha um so they 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 kind of sent a lot of people to this yeah they 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 definitely uh after this being the second reported sighting in as many days Mm -hmm. um they probably were like all right Let's just figure out what this is. It's probably like a bear or something. Yeah. Let's deal with it and move on with our lives. So, a German shepherd, or as I like to call them, the goodest boys, uh, <laughs> was called to track the creature. 
Uh, they would drag the creature to a pond, and they found black slime along the way. If this sounds familiar, that's because this is the portion of the story that I read on uh, episode two of Cryptopedia. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, because the slime stuff, because it was like a mm-hmm. commonality between that and the Enfield Horror. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I guess apparently the dude who was like leading the dog, or was being led by the dog, rather. Yeah. He reached down and like grabbed the slime, and it would like leave a black residue on his fingertips. Okay. So, I don't know what that has to do with anything. Get Henry Zabrowski on the case. Um, <laughs> it's hipster vomit. It's hipster vomit. It's time-traveling hipster vomit. Um, the trail would lead to a wooded area that was too thick to be entered. Okay. Uh, by the, the cops or the, the dog. Um, additionally, the dog would hesitate every time it would find the slime. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's any number of reasons that a dog might hesitate when it finds something. Because the smell might be too bad or something yeah. like those lines. Um, so if you're looking at the... Uh, so the police would then take the dog off the trail... And they search the area with flashlights to no avail. Mm-hmm. So this is where the story gets a little muddy for me reconstructing it from memory. Yeah. Uh, or from, from like where things are. There's like a weird trident-shaped mm-hmm. pond on the map mm-hmm. um, that I think is the pond that they're talking about. It's called Borgs Miller Lake. However, there are at least three ponds in the area that it could have been. Um, okay. There's one directly southeast of the house. And there's one to the uh, or southwest of the house, and there's one to the northeast of the house. Um, I wasn't sure which one it was. Yeah. Uh, they said that they traveled down a field, and this is the problem with trying to reconstruct something uh, 50 years after an event. The geography could have changed. True. Because there's, yeah. na- there's trees there now, but I don't know how many trees were there back in the day. I don't know if fields were fields or if they were trees. I don't know what houses were there and what houses weren't. Um, and the amount of effort that it would take to look into that, uh, probably, yeah, it would have been a bunch. So I, uh, I unfortunately didn't go into much more detail on that. Um, so continuing from on the story, uh, the dog was then taken south. Okay. Uh, of the the the, the forested area, um, to track the continue to track the creature. Um, they got to the other side of the impasse and they described it as like half a mile south of the area of the pond behind 37 Westwood. So like like I said, I I'm fairly confident that the pond is somewhere in that area. Yeah. Um. So they went about a half mile south, uh, getting around the impasse. And the dog was able to pick up the trail again. Okay. Um, and they found a barn. And I don't know if the barn is still standing because at the time it was abandoned. Uh, but I'm fairly confident that it's somewhere in the region of the Murfreesboro Water Treatment Area and Riverside Dog Park. Gotcha. Which are two areas that currently exist. Yeah. Um, so I'm like 90% confident that that's where it is just because the description makes it seem like it's somewhere in that region. Um, yeah, sort of between the lake, the waste treatment plant, the dog park, and in there, there's the yeah. Lake Forest Drive area. Yeah. yeah. So that's important because if you look at the map, that's like the same forested area that's close to the original site. Mm-hmm. Like it's mostly contiguous, with the exception of the park. Yeah. I, I only say that just so you can kind of like because it's important to build a mental map when dealing with these types of things. Because back like even with the Dover Demon. Uh, knowing that it was, like, effectively a straight line was helpful. Mm-hmm. So, because it also allowed you to think, okay, within the realm of possibility, what could this potentially be? You know? Because if it was on two separate sides of town, then that changes the the dynamic. Because yeah. if there's, like, a sighting here and a sighting there, and there's a whole bunch of houses in between, well, it becomes less likely. But if it's a sighting here and a sighting here and there's a bunch of woods in between, well, then the story becomes more interesting, Mm -hmm. and you have to start to... You have to start to put on your detective cap and try and figure out what's going on. Yeah. So, reportedly, the trail led to a barn. This barn was abandoned, as I said before. Um, The dog was scared of the barn when it approached. Now, keep in mind, there's a number of reasons why a dog might be scared of a barn. 
or mm-hmm. a scent. Because yeah. if it's a if it's a predator and the dog's familiar with a predator, maybe or maybe there's some instinctual reaction to that predator, mm-hmm. like a bear, for example, right? So if a bear had been in the barn, maybe the the dog picked up on the bear. Uh, if it was a if it was this whatever Sasquatch type creature, yeah. maybe it picked up on that. We don't know because when the officers investigated, there was nothing in the region of the barn. Mm-hmm. So the trail went cold, and that was it. Um, and an addendum can be added to the police report where the neighbor's child came into the house approximately 10 minutes before Cheryl and Randy spotted the creature, and they claimed to see a large ghost. Oh, uh, okay. So if you're thinking about it, a white creature with... A white tall creature could also be viewed as a ghost to a ten year old. Yeah. Or a yeah. child or whatever age they were. I didn't I don't think the police report had the age. Um Yeah, they didn't they didn't state the age of the child. Um so one officer, uh Jerry Nellis, who was the dog handler, um, and I think on the police report yeah, on the police report they're they're listed as a security officer, so they are affiliated with this. Okay. Um He's convinced that the creature was a bear. Um, there was a 20, 2005 article that I found, um, and he considered the footprints from the previous sighting and the description given. Uh, I misread that. <laughs> so considering the footprints from the previous sighting and the description given, it doesn't seem entirely unlikely that this could be a bear. Now, my rationale for that is bears are tall. Black bears in particular if you look up a black bear on Wikipedia, mm-hmm. which I forgot, I neglected to do for <laughs> Um mm-hmm. their length is about four and a half feet. So standing on all fours, they could probably be around five to six feet. Okay. okay. So, you know, I, I'm just going to say all these sightings happen at night mm-hmm. or close to twilight. Yeah. So that also impacts how you view something. Mm-hmm. Um. And additionally, if the bear had albinism or something along those lines, which, while rare, is not impossible, mm-hmm. um, I would say it's rare, but less rare than a Sasquatch. <laughs> True. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it, it, it does stand to reason that it's possible that this could be the case. Mm-hmm. And, you know, there is some something to be said about him being the uh, officer who was investigating the, the scene and him believing that it was something along the lines of a uh, of a black bear. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So there is there is something to be said, and additionally, if you're looking at the, uh, I think, um, no. So they only they only uh, participated in this one one particular investigation. Yeah. There is actually someone who participated in like literally all of them, mm-hmm. but I didn't find anything that he. Uh, I didn't find any reports from him on his, his thoughts. Okay. So, it should also be noted that there is a sketch from both witnesses in this case. Yeah, there is. Yeah, so the first sketch on the left uh, in the show notes was by Cheryl. Um, these are also in the police report if you want to look through it. And that's the weird Jesus restoration looking picture. It's, uh, now that I can see the whole body in this image, it looks like there's probably a very good reason why Cheryl didn't draw what the hands were doing. <laughs> yes. We've yeah, got the a, hands uh, are in an interesting location. Yes. Yeah, we'll leave it there. <laughs> um, interestingly, Randy's sketch has a... Uh, this has been something that I noticed pointed out a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, it has a Flatwoods monster-esque shape to the head. Oh, yeah. 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 Um, but they both look largely humanoid. Yep. Um, however, as I said before, the report was made around 10, 12, and I assume that it was in close proximity to the sighting, so it can be argued that the witnesses didn't really get a great look at it, and it was yeah. just more or less humanoid shape, mm-hmm. um, and since this is in the, the 70s, they're not going to have a flashlight on hand. What's that right? mean? They didn't have flashlights in the 70s? Well... Okay, you spot a creature. Yes. You're sitting on your back porch. Yes. Which, assume you have a back porch. Um, you're sitting on your back porch. You see something. You stand up. You go to look at it. Right? You might have your light on. Right? 
and it's it's a dim incandescent light bulb, mm-hmm. right? Um, you don't have a flashlight right next to you, most likely. Everyone's got a flashlight. What if the power goes out? Okay, you're sitting on the back porch talking to your significant other. Yeah. Do you just have a flashlight ready? He say, no, let me go grab my flashlight. And then you go in the drawer and you grab your flashlight. And then it's gone. Nah, I'd hang around. Yeah. Nah. Okay, whatever. <laughs> so they don't, they likely didn't have a flashlight to shine on this thing. Mm-hmm. I mean, because it's, it's like, once again, it's not like now when I can literally open my phone, open the, the lock, slide down, and hit flashlight, and I've got a flashlight. Yeah. Um,. But since these are anecdotes, there's no definitive answer. And it's anecdotal evidence, which at the end of the day is not much better than no evidence at all. It just gives you a jumping off point to investigate. Mm -hmm. And then you you gather empirical data about the thing. However, there was one final setting in this flap. Oh, jam. Um, And... I use the term flap and I realize I don't think we've ever used the term flap, but uh, if you're not familiar with the term flap, it's basically a bunch of sightings in a row Mm -hmm. for all intents and purposes. Uh, It's used most commonly in the UFO communities um, to describe when there's like a bunch of UFOs sighted at the same time. Yeah. But you know, it's a whole thing. So this time the sighting was by a bunch of carnies. Oh, that's a good one. Uh, gotta love it. They were all 19 at the time, which is neat. Uh huh. Um, it also makes me wonder if they were actually 19 if they just said they were 19, but that's yeah. a whole other thing. Uh, so the ponies from the carnival were disturbed early morning at 2 a.m. Um, they were described as attempting to pull free from the trees that they were tied to, which is way better than a, a dollop episode I just listened to where they neglected to tie their horses <gasps> down. You heard that one too? Oh, yeah. Boy. Oh, my God. Oh. That was so dumb. I think that was the most recent episode at the time of recording. Yeah. Oh, boy. So <laughs> these carnies didn't repeat his mistakes, apparently. <laughs> uh, so when investigating... The workers sighted a creature that was seven to eight feet tall, light brown hair covered its entire body, and it was standing erect on two legs, weighing 300 to 400 pounds. So, a few things. Uh, I I never understood how they could figure the weight of of anything non-human. I I honestly, if you show me a 300-pound bear and a 200-pound bear, I wouldn't be able to tell you which one's weight. I wouldn't be able to get even close to their weight. i just say that one's smaller than that one. Yeah, like, I can't even judge human weights at all. Because I think you're you're I, you're a little shorter than me, and by looks, I would say you're a little skinnier than me, yet you weigh more than me. Yeah, I'm like... You're dense. Yeah, I'm a dense boy. Yeah. So like, I've got I, that... I don't know how they even judge weights of humans. No. I, yeah, it, it's difficult. And I, I, I always am like, how do you know that? I'm also really bad at knowing uh, heights. And yeah. actually, I will say this: humans are bad at identifying the heights of things. Oh, I believe it. And the the reason I say that is because walk into a Seven <laughs> Eleven. There's those uh, there's those height things, they're, right? There, those are all within two inches, I guess, plus or minus two inches of whatever the real number is. But the fact of the matter is, they're there to judge, do a rough judge of the height. Yeah. Right. And they have different color codings, so you have the association of the color and the number yeah. in your mind, which makes it easier to identify a height or so the camera can identify the person as well. Mm-hmm. But the long and short of it is humans are bad at identifying heights, and they're bad at guessing things. Yeah. So regardless, um, apparently the creature was investigating these ponies. He was just staring at them. <laughs> uh-huh. It made no moves to attack them whatsoever. Um, they would go to get the carny manager, and when they came back, like the carnival manager, when they yeah. came back, the creature was gone. But then it reappears again at 3 a.m. and then disappears again. They don't see it anymore. Okay. Um, there was no physical evidence of the creature this time because the report was filed later because the carnival didn't want to impact business. <laughs> so okay. looking 
looking at the map, um, this event was a, this event occurred somewhere in Riverside Park, mm-hmm. uh, roughly where I put the dot. Yeah. So once again, this flap, all three sightings of it mm-hmm. occur in this roughly wooded, less populated area. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, it doesn't definitively say that this happened. But it does say that something could have been in those woods that was not as easily noticeable. Yep. Um, additionally, the color of the bear has changed. Uh, you, you can guess what I think it is. <laughs> um, the color of the monster or cryptid or creature or whatever has changed um, slightly because now it's light brown. So it's gone from white to white or cream colored to light brown. Yeah. So we're operating on a spectrum of colors. And the spectrum is not that different across the board. Yeah. So depending on the lighting conditions and how you're seeing it, it could literally be any of those three things. Mm-hmm. Um, not a lot, but you know, once again, I'm I'm operating off of anecdotal evidence. This is me attempting to offer my lens on the, the anecdotal evidence. Um, regardless of what you believe. Your analysis, your assessment of an anecdotal evidence is going to be your assessment. Yeah. There's no proof or definitiveness to any of it, and that's mm-hmm. the real problem with anecdotal evidence is it's subject to interpretation. Yeah, yeah. Um, the creature would go silent for three years, like it was not seen or heard from at all. Mm-hmm. Um, and then almost to the day, three years later, it was seen again. Like I'm talking, we're talking six days. It's less than a week away. Yeah. So, um, a June 19th, 1976 police report was filed by Mrs. Ray Kells. In the police report, uh, three boys, Ricky Kells, uh, which is Ray Kells' uh, uh, son. Okay. Uh, David Taylor and Russell Ward, their ages being 10 for Ricky, 11 for David, and 13 for Russell. Uh, they had been playing wiffle ball, which was misspelt in the police report. They had an H. <laughs> wiffle ball has no H. Wiffle ball. A wiffle ball. Yeah, yeah. Um, a foul ball was hit between two houses, right? So while looking for the ball, Ricky saw a large creature. It okay. was roughly seven to eight feet tall and standing on the tree line. According to Ricky's description, uh, According to Ricky's description, it was approximately seven to eight feet tall, had what appeared to be large ears, and appeared to be gray in color. So, a uh, few differences here. Um, one, now it's in line with the Carney sighting. Yeah. Um, two, it's now acquired long ears, which, based on the report that was given in this case, mm-hmm. um, this was a little bit later in the day, so there might have been still some light. Yeah. Uh, a little earlier in the day, rather. I don't know definitively. Um, additionally, it's now gray in color. So we're adding another color to the spectrum. Mm-hmm. Right? So we've got a kind of broad spectrum, and we don't really have any consistency between it. But yeah. if you're assuming different lighting levels, it could potentially be the same creature. But it's kind of hard to say definitively. Mm-hmm. Um, so additionally, the creature was covered in hair, and did not move while being observed. As the boy ran away, boys ran away, supposedly the creature audibly thumped into the woods. Okay. Which I have in my life never heard any animal thump loud enough for me to hear it at a distance. I mean, when the kitty cats be running around the house and such, they'd be a thump. Yeah, thump, but thump, outside? Thump. Horses? Yeah, they, thump, 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 yeah, thump, maybe thump, thump. maybe horses, yeah. So yeah. it's it's a large creature regardless. Yeah. Um which at seven feet tall, I don't know if it's gonna be that heavy. True. That's that's my main content point of contention. It's a large creature and it's not like a horse, which wh- how much does a horse weigh? How much does a thoroughbred horse weigh? Uh weighs about two and a half uh miniature ponies. You're not wrong. Let me look it up. <laughs> uh, fuck. Oh, because a thoroughbred is not a a thoroughbred's not a species. It's a type. Yeah. Uh, 
where's a list of horse breeds? Here we go. I don't know. Alexa, how much does a horse weigh? 840 to 1,200. Yeah, so it's a, a biped would not be able to maintain their weight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, and that's an Alexa quote. So, yeah. regardless, the three boys' stories match up well. However, the officers who investigate could not find any trace of the creature. Um, the report indicates that there were several large rocks overturned in the woods approximately 100 yards away, but that means literally nothing. Yeah. Um, it's an interesting story, but I see several red flags. First, this report was filed three years after the first event, nearly to the day, which is usually suspect to me. Yeah. Um, but that could also indicate that the creature could have some pattern of hibernation. So, one or the other, mm -hmm. right? Um, that being said, it is possible that the kids could have heard someone talking about the monster, especially since the sighting happened on the same road as the June 26th site. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, literally the same road. Yeah. So, little, little, uh, little suspect, mm -hmm. right? Um... Why are you telling me to correct my grammar? No, it's not sightings. Um, <laughs> the next major red flag, as I said before, was the thumping noise. How heavy is the creature that is making these thumping noises? The big old boy. Also, wouldn't it be very easy to find the creature if it was audibly thumping around the woods? Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um. Finally, and perhaps most importantly, I don't know if I trust the testimony of three adolescents that are 10 to 13 years old. Yeah, 7 to 8 feet tall is questionable coming from a little kid. Yeah, it's also like really super possible that it's an embellishment or an outright, outright lie yeah. from the kids. Which is a kid thing to do, so I'm not going to knock them for it. Mm -hmm. um, there was one final report of the Big Money Monster. Interestingly, this report's type incident was filed as possible bear sighting. Okay. While the others were sighting of unknown creature, as I said before. Yeah. Um, in this instance, the creature was sighted by three children. Michael E. Mifflin, because his family hates him, so they gave him an alliterative name on that yeah. one with an E in the middle. That, that, that's such a close name, though. Like, Michael E. Mifflin. Yeah. It's, it, it's like Dun it's Dunder Mifflin. Yeah. Did he name his son Dunder? Dunder, Dunder, Dunder. <laughs> My mouth is dying, apparently. Um, uh, he described the creature as six feet tall and weighing between five to six tons. That's a dense boy. Yeah. Uh, and to have a black furry coat. This sighting was apparently at 9 a.m. on the 26th. Another child, Karen D. Gruber, described it as real tall, fat, and big. <laughs> uh huh. These are not remarkable reports to me. No. Uh, the father also said when when he called the cops that that his children had sighted the big muddy monster. Yeah. And that the dog was acting strange in concurrence with the sightings. Um. However, because the father was predisposed to believe it was a monster, that indicates that he was probably aware of the report that happened a week before. Yeah. Um, he was also probably aware of the report that happened three years before, and it's interesting. He is in the same neighborhood as the other sightings, but yeah. he is across the road from a fairly – it looks like it's a fairly uh, well-traveled road because it goes straight through town. Yeah. Like, it looks like it's the main, main drag of the town. Mm -hmm. So mm, there's a lot of factors at, at play here that make me a little more doubtful of this account. Um, and I'm kind of willing to dismiss it because there's literally no physical evidence. Um, it also doesn't match with the description at all of the other ones in that it's now six feet tall and it has a black furry coat. Yeah, this, I like to, he lives on a road named after himself. I like that. That'd be fun. That is true. He does, he does live on a road named after himself. That is a cool thing. Yeah, Mifflin Lane. Mifflin on Mifflin. Yeah, I'll give him that. Um, but yeah, so there's six stories, no, five stories of this creature. Four of them 
are kind of similar. One of them is almost definitely just a either a black bear sighting or, you know, whatever. Yeah. Um, so, the aftermath of this case, believe it or not, not a lot. No. <laughs> Um, <laughs> okay. The Murphy's the Murfreesboro monster was widely popular at the time, um, and as I said, the case file was the most frequently requested at the Murfreesboro the police department. Um, and while a case report is present on the uh, Murfreesboro website, it doesn't really seem like the town has embraced it. Okay. Uh, in the way that Rhinelander embraced their own signature cryptid, the Hodak, as seen in episode 26 of Cryptopedia. That's right. There's at least three episodes of Cryptopedia <laughs> that are related to this cryptid. Um, speculation has been made over whether or not this was a big one. Uh, Lauren Col- Coleman, uh, who we've encountered before on the Enfield Horror case in, I think, Cripplefoot? Oh, I, I didn't mean to say Cripplefoot. Christmas foot was the Christmas what we titled foot. that one. Yeah, let's uh let's let's bleep those two <laughs> those two things. Uh huh. Uh, just because I didn't mean to say that. Yeah. <laughs> I was literally, yeah. So he was also, I think, featured on Christmas foot, um, which he might not have been. Regardless, so uh, Lauren Coleman, oh boy, I was tired when I wrote yeah, this. Yeah, I was trying to figure out what you're trying to write. Um. Oh, uh, he does note something. Oh, okay, you just uh, dropped the E. Yeah. yeah, Lauren Coleman does note something interesting about this and other Bigfoot stories from the Midwest. Okay. Um, there is something very unique about this eastern Midwestern Bigfoot, Coleman said. From reports from the Mud Monster, it seems to front people the way it didn't in the West. So it is actually pretty cool, like what he's pointing out. Um, a lot of Midwestern Bigfoot stories are a lot more violent and a lot yeah. more menacing, whereas a lot more of the Western Bigfoot stories do tend to be a little more gentle, a little less uh, fierce. Mm-hmm. Um, which actually might account for what they're dealing with, because I am firmly in the camp of this being a bear. Yeah. Firmly. Um, the light coloration might be explained by an albino bear, which, as I said before, still more common than Sasquatches. <laughs> yeah, than a Bigfoot, yeah. 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 Uh, <laughs> That being said, the tracks behavior... Wow, I was really tired when I wrote this copy. Uh, The tracks behavior and patterns all indicate a bear, which lived in the region. Um, But it was misidentified enough times that it resulted in a flap of paranormal activity. Because Mm -hmm. it is entirely possible that a bunch of people saw a bear and then didn't report it. Yeah. Um, And that's it. So, not a whole lot to go on here, because there's Literally, the only physical evidence is the footprints, Mm -hmm. and the footprints look like nothing. Yeah. So, it's a bunch of interesting stories. I do believe that people saw something, and if they saw something, I believe it was a bear. Mm -hmm. That's it. Um, (laughs) Well, almost it. Okay. I want to point out something that I found in my research. Yes. So... I use the cryptids wiki to give me ideas Mm -hmm. because they have a random feature and I just hit random a bunch until I see a cryptid that looks interesting. Yeah. Um, And I, before we leave the Murfreesboro monster for the second time, I want to take a moment to discuss the problems with cryptids wiki. Yeah. (laughs) So first the body of the article is largely uh, plagiarized from the Cryptopia article at the time of recording because it could change between yeah. now and when we release. Um, additionally, the description is terrible. And I have a picture of it if you scroll down to the next page. Uh-huh. So there's a few things about this description. First, the picture of the Murfreesboro monster, which says artist rendering of the Murfreesboro monster. I did yeah. a reverse Google search on it because there was no accreditation for what that image was. Yeah. Um, the artwork is not an example of the Murfreesboro Mud Monster, but in fact, a Latvian swamp devil drawn by Dishermia on Divino. <laughs> I could find the literal post that this individual made about yeah. it. Um, and it's literally another one of my mythical creatures. There is mm-hmm. a strange thing about Latvian devils. It's really hard to dig through the real ancient Latvian devil. It's all coded in Christianity, blah, 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 blah. 
But yeah. basically, the idea is this is a, a swamp devil from Latvian mythology. Yeah. That this individual has drawn a picture of. Uh, it's from 2012, based on the uh, what I'm reading. Or, no, comments are from, yeah, 2012, 2012. So it's a bit of an older picture. Additionally, inexplicably, there's a picture of the Sargasso Sea. Yeah. And it's it's said that it's a uh, in the, the, the quotes it's map of the U.S. <laughs> oh, okay. Which, if you look at the image, it doesn't really look like a map of the U.S. No. Um. Finally, about the description bar, uh, there's two things of note there. One, the type is hairy humanoid, which is misspelt <laughs> as hairy as in like Harry and the Hendersons. Yeah. Um, and the last sighting was 19, uh, 1976 to present, oh, which God. makes no sense. So, as the main article is an absolute mess, uh, and literally nothing in the main article is, like, at all coherent, uh-huh. it's a bunch of stuff thrown together. And, like, if you look at the – if you uh, go to the Cryptopedia – the Cryptids – wiki art page which i just sent you on skype yeah um if you go to that article there's a picture of a sasquatch holding its hands like ah yeah hey running Jazz away hands. um there's a picture of a bigfoot plaster cast yeah that is not the murfreesboro mud, mud monster i can tell you for sure um like definitely doesn't exist in that form. Yeah. Um there's also like just different fonts are used because I presume that they copy, copy and, and paste, paste from different yeah. areas, areas, but they didn't take the time to like standardize it. Yeah. Um there there's a lot of problems with this. But also uh I, I was just looking through this. Mm-hmm. Um I just recognized that the category is aquatic based cryptid and there's nothing aquatic about this. Cryptid yeah. It just than... happened around a river. Yeah. Okay. But regardless, my favorite thing about this article, uh, was a con, uh, a comment that was posted twice by Jack Assen, which yeah. I assume is an assassin related username. Uh, uh-huh. um, fake, fake, fake. This was a creation of a publicity firm to drum up tourism, dollar sign, buck, dollar sign, uh, for the Murfreesboro Apple Festival, period. <laughs> he posted that twice because he cares that much about it. In, yeah. On January 12th. Um, Holy crap. That's a bold claim. It is. I looked into it. Literally zero evidence. There's literally no point in even trying to discount it because there's nothing. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, um, this is really a serious problem with the Cryptids Wiki. Uh, there's no intellectual rigor on the site. There's no desire to um, try and keep things, like, at all coherent. And there's no desire to keep things, you know, uh, even close to skeptical or caring about objective fact so doing doing i just did a quick search about the apple festival apparently Uh uh-huh it's the barbecue bigfoot and apple festival oh okay so apparently they are using but still at least says one website that i they they just saw i don't know how real that is but Someone named Steven said it's the Barbecue Bigfoot and Apple Festival. Alrighty then. I mean, listen. There's less of a trail pointing to this being a publicity stunt than there was pointing to the Hodag being a publicity stunt, though. Yeah. That's all I'm going to say. That That's, like, literally all I have for you. I, I This is just not... There's not a lot of hay to make out of that. And I tried to make hay and there wasn't. <laughs> uh-huh. But yeah. I'm so... just looking at fun pictures if you if 
So I guess the uh, the muddy monster they they have a costume that they around the apple festival that someone wears and uh, there's some fun stuff. Some fun, really uh... see. You know I'm disappointed in myself. There's someone carrying it. It's on a news channel. I'm really oh that's a phenomenal picture. It's riding in a car. I'm gonna I'm gonna play I'm gonna paste this on the. Is it the one where the guy's shows. just holding it? Yeah. Yeah, it's a pretty good picture. Um. Yeah. So, like I said, I you know I didn't really look into that a whole lot, but there's a big muddy brown IPA. There is. It's got a beer. So I guess they didn't. They did em- embrace it a little bit more than I thought, but probably not to the level. Like still not to the level of Rhinelander. No, I think there's an Apple Festival where there's one guy with a costume, and then there's also probably a local brewery that made a beer. I mean that's that's yeah. not huge. <laughs> no, I mean I was I was in a Mystic recently, yeah, and they had like a crazy quag or whatever for like the the cranberry bogs, yeah, type thing. But like that's not crazy. That's just like you know, oh we've got this thing around us. Let's let's make some fun stuff about that. You know, yeah. you know, and there's there's nothing wrong with that in my opinion. I think I think people get bent out of shape. Yeah. So, twelve best Murfreesboro images. Oh God, let's see. There's a picture of a cross. Ah, uh, that's a big cross. <laughs> so why it's one of the twelve best, John? Yeah, there's like a lemon squeeze type thing. Ooh, that's a nice waterfall. Anywho, this this uh this episode's starting to become audio poison. So, uh, <laughs> I think I'm gonna start with the plugs. Uh, the website is cryptopediacast.com. Instagram and Twitter are at cryptopediacast. If you want to email us, cryptopediacast at gmail.com or us at cryptopediacast.com. As always, all of those are linked on our website, cryptopediacast.com. Um, we have a Patreon, which you can search on Patreon, and I think I forgot to plug it in the literal sense last episode but <laughs> we do have a patreon um last episode we did a shout out to our jackalopes which we do monthly um which we only have one so hey clay hey hey clay, it's a clay, uh, look at the clay sinclair look at you you're what a guy what a guy yeah. you know i heard that uh he was voted the most handsome latvian devil i mean Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I I wasn't sure where I wanted to go with that, but I recognize that me I have a particular form of self-deprecation in my humor and deprecation in my humor. Uh-huh. That uh makes it hard for me to make jokes about other people because I don't like deprecating other people. <laughs> Except for you, Brandon. <laughs> You're special. Yeah. <laughs> You've earned the you've earned the right to be uh, uh, deprecated. <laughs> um, yeah, we also have a Facebook group and a Facebook page, which we post updates to and you know like little behind the scenes bits. Um, we actually just recently got someone liking the page. I just got a notification ah. as we this podcast. Um, literally the only thing I use for Facebook, uh, Facebook for anyways. Um, if you enjoy the podcast, which I'm amazed if you enjoyed the podcast. Um, <laughs> you can rate, review, subscribe, all that good stuff. Um, I think it helps. I'm not really sure, but I think if I would like to get to the point where where we have an actual rating on iTunes, because yeah. right now we have, it's like not enough ratings, even though all of our ratings are good. Yeah. Um, if you have any monster requests or stories, be sure to send that. But I do want to say, uh, if you have good sources, send those our way too. Yes. A yeah. good source is definitely the thing that we care about the most. Uh-huh. Um, like I said on last episode, I have literally, I think, how many episodes? I have so many episodes in flight right now yeah. that I'm just, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four. Five. I have 11 episodes in flight as Shoot. we speak. Uh, no, 10, sorry, because one of those is like this. Um, but most of those episodes are held back by the fact that I don't have sources or I'm waiting on re- responses from sources I've been uh, actively contacting. Yeah, a um, good source is worth 
2,300 words or one episode. That's, <laughs> yes. Actually, how long was this episode? I don't, uh, how long was this one? This one was, mine was 2,300 something, something, something. Mine was about 2,000. Yeah. 1,938. Yeah, I found 2,000 ep- 2, words tends to be, like, the sweet spot for an episode. Yeah, yeah. It's like writing an essay, you know, at school. They're like, you need to do a 2,000-word essay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, it's actually a pretty decent heuristic. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. Like, because <laughs> um, legitimately, I, I of course, I try to tell the whole story. Yeah. But you, you try to shoot for something that's compact in the time frame, which is yeah. about an hour. Mm-hmm. Right? So we don't want to keep – we don't want to belabor – we don't want to overstay our welcome. Which we're kind of doing right now. <laughs> if you got any creepy pasta or cryptopasta pasta you want me to read, I won't. Yeah. <laughs> you could find me on Instagram at donkey underscore hands. My website is boyerb.com. My email is brandon at cryptopediacast.com. And my Twitter is at crypto brandon. Uh, if you want to get in contact with me on Instagram, I'm at new2057. On Twitter, I'm at JF Dunham. Uh, my website's functional uh, at johndunhamgames.com. Uh, <laughs> we talked about a little bit last week. I, Because of the way we record these, I have no idea if I made any progress on that, that idea I was talking about. Um, but keep your eyes on John Dunham Games or the Patreon mm-hmm. feed because something interesting might be going up there in the ne- in the coming months. Yeah. Um, if you want to email me, john at cryptopediacast.com. Our art was done by Tom Hill. You could find him on Instagram at Thomas Michael Hill. His website is greatergloryco.com and his email is tommikehill at gmail.com. All right. Well, um, I still got to go. I got to go watch some Hornswoggle videos. It's, oh, no. <laughs> I don't know. The, the, the Lucky Charms, I feel like simultaneously offended and yeah. I can't look away. <laughs> <laughs> right it's it's yeah. one of those things where it's just like you know i won't i won't go to any official wwe sites i won't i won't give them i won't give them the satisfaction but i gotta know more i gotta know more about the lore um but as always i'm john i'm brandon and things are gonna get weird to be honest (laughs) we live in a reality where i need to look at hornswoggle videos all the time (laughs) Uh. oh boy